Hey guys, Michael from Oakland here. You're watching Loudwire. When did you decide that you wanted to start uh, singing in a metal style and to start singing gutturals? Like, what influenced you to do that? Uh, well, napalm death. You know, like I, I was, you know, for me, I'm born in '74, so it makes me 45 years old. And I grew up with the new wave, British heavy metal, that kind of stuff. And it was like an evolution of sorts. You wanted heavier, faster, yep. more extreme. And of course, you had the speed and thrash metal scene. And along comes the, the early the black metal scene and then the death metal scene. And at that point, when I got into death metal, I was 14, 15 years old. Yep. And I was just learning you know, a few licks on the guitar, and I figured I could do that. I could do, uh, you know, You Suffer by Napalm Death. <laughs> yeah. Two second song, you know, <laughs> just brrr. You didn't necessarily have to be on the right fret, you know. Like no, just no. make noise, you know, that's how it started. And I always wanted to be a, a really good lead guitar player, like Ingve Malmsteen style. That's, that was my... Really? What I, yeah, that's wow. what I want, but I never, you know, I never practiced. I never got there. <laughs> Yes, and uh, nobody else in the band at the time, when I st started with my first band, Eruption, nobody wanted to be the singer. And I was like, well, I guess I'll, I'll be the singer then. And then, uh, because I couldn't really sing like Celine Dion, you know, I tried to do the, the, the screams instead. Uh, we did Misfits covers with that set. We played oh, wow. all the Misfits songs. And, uh, and, uh, did you do a good Danzig? No, <laughs> I'm a too juvenile of a voice, like ee, you know. Okay, a bit too young at that yeah, time. Yeah, I didn't have the whatever it's doing. Uh, whoa, whoa, whoa. I didn't have that. <laughs> but uh, we did that, you know, that type of stuff. And then I found my own voice. I didn't know if I did it the right way. Mm -hmm. I didn't know if I had a technique until we recorded the first album, because that's the only time I got feedback from somebody who knew uh, what it's supposed to sound like in the yeah. studio. And that was Don Swan who did our first oh, two albums. Yes. And he said, well, that's the most insane death metal vocals I've heard. I was like, oh, you don't say. I didn't know. You're a big fan of David Vincent's uh, yeah. voice. Was he a big influence on how you developed your guttural? Yeah, on the only influence. The him only and, influence. Him and Chuck, well, not him and Chuck and Schuldiner. I also like the kind of piggy sounds of Chris Reifert. Oh, yeah. Like the autopsy, I like that, that stuff. Uh, Quartham Bathory was big for me, but Vincent was the best because you could hear what he what he was saying basically. Yeah, I met him the other day, you know. And he was he wearing in. a cowboy hat? He was wearing a cowboy <laughs> hat. Uh, but I love Dave. You know, he's, yeah. uh, I met him a couple of times, and uh, I, I can't remember if I ever said to him that he's the number one. Yeah, he is the best. I, I think that's a fact almost. It's not like. A matter of taste, you can't dispute that. Like, yeah, he's he's the king, king of death. It's pretty awesome. He is. Yeah. So, do you remember back when you started to develop it? Were you the kind of person to like hide yourself in a room and to kind of try to get like? Uh, uh, uh? No. 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 I just. Uh, I mean, uh, I based my technique on not hearing what I'm doing. I think because you're in the. We didn't use earplugs in those days. No. No. We had an old. 70s PA that we got from a, a Swedish, like legendary Swedish punk band called Ebba Grön hmm. that we had in our, uh, in our rehearsal space. I mean, we didn't really have a rehearsal space. We just borrowed, yeah. you know, a place and carried everything to, to be able to rehearse. Uh, so the technique is based on trying to, to cut through the noise. Yeah. Uh, and a lot of it based on not hearing what the I'm sorry if I'm stupid. No, you can say what yeah, you want. Not, not uh, know, like hearing what you're doing. So uh, I didn't know what, what my technique was, but I learned after a while that it was an, uh, there was a sense of economy to how I, I don't kind of ruin my voice yeah. in that sense. Um, so I had that technique. It's not so high in volume, you know. It's, it's, sure. It's pretty low in volume, but it sounds like a beast, you know, if I get it right. Uh, but it wasn't until we started recording that I could see that it actually sounds good with a good sound, too. Wow, that's awesome. You didn't even really know what it sounded like while you were doing it. No. So I you were no pleasantly idea. surprised when you heard it back. Yeah. 
I liked it. And also, I still do that with the clean vocals too. I want to sound like someone else, basically. I don't want to yeah. hear me in the mix. Wow. I want to listen to a band that I'm not involved in. So I can listen as a fan, if you know what I mean. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so that, with the screaming vocals, that was much easier, of course, because, you know, I don't sound like that. <laughs> uh, with the clean vocals, I try to, uh, you know, reach those types of levels of the, the people that I admire. And those are all great singers, and I'm not a great singer. I'm just trying to sound like someone else. Were you trying to sound like anyone in particular on this new record? Um, well, I ended up finding uh, a voice that I think sounds good because it's I'm singing really over my abilities. Hmm. You know, I'm singing higher than I can, and that in sound, it's just, you know, you get that frustrated sound which yeah. I like in my voice, if you know what I mean. Uh, but my idols are the, 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 the good, good stuff, you know, like Ronnie Dio, yeah. Paul Rogers, those types of, that has the blues in, in, you know, blues background. But then I also like to sing songwriters like Nick Drake and Jonah Mitchell and um, Coverdale. Of course. David Coverdale. Yeah. Uh, yeah, those types of things. I'm not very big on power metal like that. Sure. No, I, I, that sounds a bit silly to me. <laughs> so I want that type of, I guess, a man's voice, you know, <laughs> that type of stuff I like. And especially if they have that blue sea roots. I, oh, yeah. I, I really like that. Yeah, awesome. Michael, thank you so much for talking to me today. Cheers. In Cauda Veninum is yeah. a new record. That's right. September 27th. Pick it up. Cheers.